Hello everyone and welcome back. I am Pofnar and this is the Medic's Weapons Tips and Tricks Review Guide, which I was speaking about in the first round of our Upward Official, which hopefully you've watched and found as exciting as I did. But anyway, this video will contain tips and tricks for each Medic weapon, as well as a quick sort of review and the positives and negatives of it which will hopefully help you choose which weapons you want to use in combat and it will mainly focus around Highlander but we might go to pubs and sixes as well we might touch on them but we probably won't go into them anyway let's get started we'll, I think we'll start with the sort of secondary weapon of the medic as even though it is the secondary weapon it is probably the most important weapon we'll start from the sort of scratch and go up just so every, every single medic or prospecting physician knows where to start and what sort of can happen so as you can see, I've been circling this medigun. The medigun is the stock medic weapon, and you can have it in this form, or this nice blood form. Mmm, tasty. But anyway, the medigun is your stock medic weapon. It will build an uber charge in 40 seconds. I'm assuming you'll all know what an uber charge is, but we won't go that far in. But it will build in 40 seconds. 40 seconds is a base, sort of a base heal rate, and is as quick as it will go. It will go for no faster than 40 seconds, you will have an uber, which you can see in setup times. Setup times it will build as quick as possible, so don't try and build in setup times. <laughs> but 40 seconds is a very, well, we'll, we'll go with the standard time because it is the standard weapon. And upon receiving your uber charge, you will have 8% of invulnerability, or 8 seconds, not 8%, 8 seconds of invulnerability, assuming you don't flash. If you flash someone, which is where within an Uber you switch from healing one target to another person, it will decrease, I repeat, decrease your Uber charge time. So it will go from 8 seconds max to around 6 seconds, and if you flash again, it will go back down to around 4 seconds in length. So if you're running around left clicking spamming, and then your Uber charge goes, or fades away quicker than someone who Uber charged after you, that is why they have not flashed you have. Either that or they're hacking. <laughs> but anyway. So yeah don't that's your stock medigun don't flash if you don't have to it, it can be used in most situations the benefit of it that is one of the benefits <laughs> you can use it in pretty much every single situation it doesn't have to be specifically defensive or offenses or average you can use it where, whichever need you have you can push in with it you can not push in with it very very versatile weapon very interesting weapon Alternatively to this, you have the Crit Creek, which builds in 32 seconds. These are, of course, the quickest times. Normally, you'd have a Medigun Uber charge in around 50 to 60 seconds. Expect those sort of times. Normally, 52 seconds build, pretty good time to build Uber charge. You know, 47 seconds, you're looking at a brilliant time to build Uber charge. But let's go with about 52 to 60 seconds. That is your average time to actually build an Uber charge. Because you, you've overhealed people to the max. You can't. That is when it will go slowest. If someone is overhealed to the max, it will build slower. So if you're trying to build with someone, which I'd look up in sort of a general thing. I'm assuming you all know how to build. It's where someone damages themselves and then you heal them. If they damage themselves and go below overheal, it will be a lot quicker than if they are in overheal. It will slow it down if they're in overheal and fully healed. Crit Creek. Builds in 32 seconds, or no, 30 seconds, sorry, and can generally build in around 40 to 50 seconds. So you've got a good 10 second advantage on the media. You do not become invulnerable though. Instead of being invulnerable, you give out critical damage, and that's where you give 300% of your usual damage, or around that figure. So a sticky bomb, which is, I'm using this reference because most medics crits a demo man. Uh, a sticky bomb will usually do around 80 to 100 damage, or 120 depending on where it lands, you know, you can get higher than that. But let's go with those figures. So 300% of that, 300% of 80 is 240 damage, 300% of over 100, you know, 300 and something damage. That is an awful lot of damage, that's more than anyone can take. I mean, a fully overhealed heavy goes up to 150, uh, 450, sorry, it goes 150 extra. It's 50 Overheal goes up to 50% of someone's current health, so heavy starts at 300 health, you'd overheal into 450 maximum. And yeah, so a crit sticky wouldn't kill him in one, but it would kill every, anyone else on the team in one hit. Or a hot, That's assuming you get a complete direct hit, obviously you have splash damage effect, and it might take two to kill people, but generally one to two stickies will kill everything. So that is a very, very powerful weapon. 
Obviously, it's mainly an aggressive weapon, as you can guess. You're not invulnerable, you're putting out a lot of damage, but it can be used defensively. If you have watched some of my previous videos and watched Barn Blitz, which is probably my third video ever made, uh, one, or, uh, one to three videos ever made, I critched Jub Jub on last after the call, and as I was saying, it was a very clever thing because we used it defensively. We wiped everyone around the Uber, and so they could only push in with the Uber. They didn't have anyone else to push in with, so the other seven players on our team could focus on the Uber. So that was a very you know, clever call, and that's how a good example of how it could be used defensively. But it is mainly an offensive weapon. This is compared to the Uber, or Medigun regular, I should refer to because everything's an Uber where it's a very versatile weapon so it's very interesting but you have to use it in the right situation obviously they all have the right situation but it's very game specific and also on your team I know for a fact I have played with a soldier before who hates Kritzkriegs I don't know why but if you give him a Kritzkrieg he will do very limited limited damage because he's just gets really panicky but if you give him a Nuba charge he'll do a lot of damage so if Whatever medigun you use, it's very dependent on your team what they want. If you're taking a demo main who hates crits, you know, then don't take him in with crits, take someone else in. Maybe a demo man prefers Uber, so in that case an Uber might be better for the situation. But anyway, let's move on. Quick fix. Uh, quick fix, it got buffed to where it actually over -he heals people now. I'm sure you all know that, it has been out for a while. But the bad side of the quick fix before was that it didn't overheal people. Now it overheals people, and it heals people, as you can see on the little description, heals people 40% faster, and that is, that is a great thing. If someone's, if you're healing a load of people as a medic, and everyone needs heals at once, you can only heal one target at a time, well obviously you can heal more, but to effectively heal someone you can only heal one person at a time. If you are only healing one person at a time, everyone else is still waiting to be healed, so they're at risk of dying, and then you're losing your positioning in a map, let's say, in a game. So a quick fix, you're allow able to keep people alive a lot, lot quicker. And you get an uber charge in 25% faster. So you're thinking, what's the downside to this? Well, one, it only overheals people to 50%. So instead of having a heavy on 450 health, he's on 375. Instead of having a soldier on 300, he's on 250. Uh, three, uh, yeah, 250, sorry. <laughs> but So they have less health overall, if you've overhealed everyone. And also, you're not fully ubercharged. It heals, at fr instead of an ubercharge, it heals people at 300% of your normal heal rate. So say you're healing people. You're already healing people at 140%. And when you ubercharge, it heals people at 300%. So, you know, you're looking at very, very fast healing rate here. And you can use it offensively, defensively, and neutrally. You can take down the level 3 century while healing a soldier with it. I have tried it, it does work with heavies, it does work with demo man. You can take down the level 3 while in a quick fix uber. While under attack from one other person. As soon as you start getting attacks from, I uh, like, say, a demo man or a soldier, it's not going to work because they're just going to out damage the 300%. Which is one of the downsides to the quick fix. Even though it is 300% healing, you are not fully invulnerable, so you can still be headshot, which takes away a lot of your health very quickly, and if you're getting focused, you know, it's a pretty downside to it, where, and that's where it would lose out to an uber. But it's still a very interesting weapon, because you can you can jump very, f well, you can jump with it, to be honest, if you're a medic, you can you can jump with soldiers and demo, go very fast, as you can see it says it's moved, moves at the speed of any faster heal target. You move with scouts, you move with uh, charge and charge demos, so best thing about it is you can rocket jump. <laughs> as explained, you jump with a soldier and demo, you can go very far and you can get to some very unusual places in medic, which people don't expect. So a very, very good weapon, but it does have its downsides as explained. You are not invulnerable, you do not get out crits, it just keeps people alive quicker. So the main benefit to this weapon is people around you or will stay in the fight longer and can hold positioning longer. So if you've got a superbly good team with DM, it might be a good idea to run quick fix because everyone can stay alive really, really... That's a bad way to put it. <laughs> everyone can stay alive a lot longer. So it may be beneficial to use this rather than the medigun because if you can take down their medic before he gets uber charge or crit creek ever, then, you know, you can keep people alive and you're going to hold points longer. Anyway, moving on to the vaccinator. I haven't had a 100% sort of use of this weapon. I used to absolutely hate it and I've only just started to think about it. So I'm going to give you what I know, but it's not, it's not certain, to be honest. But 
You have a plus 50% ubercharge rate, so you build ubercharge very, very quickly. Main reason being there are four canisters in it. You build these canisters very quickly. It has four mini ubercharges, let's say. And you can use, like, one of them at once, or you can use two at once, three at once, or four at once. So have full eight second uber. Each canister lasts two seconds. But you can't switch healing target once you've ubered. So say you uber your heavy, you can't then switch flash it will just last two seconds. You can then flash and then use the other two seconds, which is actually quite a big benefit. If you think about it, when flashing, you can keep multiple people alive for your eight seconds, but it won't. Excuse me. It won't be healing them within the two seconds. You've pretty much stuck with who you're healing if you've used your Uber charge. And it, the most interesting thing about this weapon is it has three bonuses. Let's say, so you start with. Uh, it's like fire, explosive, and bullet resistance. So you cycle through which resistance you want using the reload key. So there it says the uh, yeah reload key. It used to be mouse wheel three, but now it's the reload key. If you press reload, it will swap from like blast resistance to fire, and then fire to um, bullet. So it will give you a twenty five percent resistance of that damage type. So it's a very good weapon if you're just randomly running around healing people, so it's probably on the same level as the Quick Fix in that regard. Quick Fix will heal people up very quickly, but in this it gives you resistance to it. So if someone's being shot by bullets, you know, it's going to 25% of the damage they took, say it took 50 damage from a bullet, just an example. Let's do 100, it's even easier. So if someone took 100 damage from a bullet, you never know, they could be crit screed. 100 damage. Uh, resistance for a vaccinator, they'd only take 75 damage instead. So it might be better for keeping people alive if you're just sort of running around the front lines. Um, but then if you uber charge it resists 75% so you're still not invulnerable but it does resist 75% and it does block 100% of crits it doesn't say that on the uber, on here on the screen but it will block 100% of crits I have tried this if a demo man if you're healing someone with blast resistance with your uber charge going so you've got a vaccinator uber charge with your blast resistance you're sitting in cosy a crits demo man comes around the corner normally you're thinking Dear Lord, this is going to do good 200 damage to me. You start walking out. If you get hit in the face with a crit sticky, it should do around 300 and something damage. If you have got the vaccinator blast resistance with its uber charge going, a crit sticky in the face will do 9 damage to you. I repeat, 9 damage. It is ridiculously good at that effect. So if you are doing a very map weight a very tight map where you know the enemy team are running crits. As soon as you hear that crits pop, you start spamming your right click button or your uber charge button and you get those blast resistances up. The crit stickies will not kill you. But you will only be holding one target. So if your team gets wiped, it is you and the other guy against the demo and the medic. So <laughs> watch out for that. But it is very powerful in that regard. Also, it builds people in overheal, as you can see there, very slowly. So the overheal will still be 100%. A heavy will still go to 450, soldier 300. But it will go 66% slower, which is a downside. Now, you might be thinking, but if you can avoid crit stickies, how is that downside? Well, you're not going to have someone crits in the a whole other time. You know, someone might be ubering into you, which you can still resist the damage. But your team's not going to have overheal. If you're trying to buff soldiers up and things, and they want to go roaming, they want overheal to stay alive longer. If you're taking a long time to do that, you're not, they're not going to be roaming, they're not going to be protecting your flanks. So that's the downside to that, you've got to think about that when using it. But anyway, that's the vaccinator. Hopefully those mediguns have helped you. And we're going to move on. Any, well, any further questions on this or any part of the video, just put them in the comments seconds or seconds <laughs> comment section or add me on Steam. I'm more than happy to accept ads on Steam. I just ask it to me directly. You no, know, I'm more than happy to answer questions. I'd prefer it if you did it in the comments because then I can see them and everyone else can see them as well and hopefully we can all learn together as a team. But anyway, us medics got to stick together, you know? We can't go healing other people all the time. We got to stick to we got to heal other medics and go medic chaining. <sighs> anyway, onto the mel on melee weapons, primary weapons. Now, these are probably the medics debatably second Bitably third, so it doesn't really matter. Primary weapons and melee weapons are in the same regard. But the primary weapon will give you some ranged advantage, which is why I favour them. So, anyway, we've got the Crusader's Crossbow. Crusader's Crossbow, it says might not minus 75% max ammo, but ignore that for the moment. Crusader's Crossbow is basically a, a quick firing, 
if you fully charge a huntsman, as in pull it all the way back, wait till it's on full power, and then release it, it will have the same arc as a just a normal shot of a Crusader's crossbow, or very very similar. But it won't give you a headshot, which is obviously a pretty safe thing to do. You know, you don't want to overpowered, but it will reload very quickly. It will reload passively which is the most beneficial thing to this weapon. Now what does that mean? You can fire a shot, switch to your medigan, by the time you switch back it will already, already be reloaded with another bolt. So that's one good thing. But anyway, it fires bolts and it heals people. So if you are standing across the map from someone, you hit them with a bolt, it will heal them for quite a bit of health. I mean it can heal up to 180 I think or something around 100 and something so it can heal people from long distances so when they're outside your medigun range this does, all these mediguns have a have a range it is about 8 to 10 yards it's quite a distance but it does have a range this obviously doesn't have a range or as across the map all TF2 maps it will it obviously does have does have a range it does have a range but from what you can see it probably won't have a range if that makes any sense, but ignore it for the moment. As long as you can hit someone with it, it doesn't have a range. It just arcs slightly. So you can heal people outside your medigun range, which is obviously beneficial if you're walking to a fight and no one's around you. You can heal someone from a distance, so you don't actually have to be in the fight to heal people. Very beneficial. If people are bombing the cart and you want to stay alive, you can stand literally out of sight and then just fire crossbows at the cart and it will heal people. Very, very good weapon. Uh, it doesn't. Well, we've already gone through. It doesn't give headshots. And minus seventy-five percent max ammo. Basically, a normal syringe gun starts with two hundred and something ammo. This is like forty ammo, but because you're only firing one bullet at a time, you'll never notice running out of ammo. If you're running out of web ammo with this weapon, I'm really judging your healing abilities because you should be in the fight healing people, not standing on the edge spraying. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, let's go on to the stock syringe gun. I know we started in a bit of an odd order here, but syringe gun. This is just a needle gun. Very. It does have an arc on the syringes. Don't know why I'm doing that little little mouth movement, but it does have an arc. Where you'll fire syringes. At, it's a pretty rapid pace, to be honest, and they do about 10 to 12 damage close range. So they they are pretty powerful. So it's very good if you're being attacked. This is a weapon where you can get good at aiming, and it will do about 50 damage to the enemy on hit. Maybe 75 or 80 the further away they are. But it's a, not a close range weapon, it's a very long range weapon. This is much more of a close range weapon where, say your healing target, he likes to leave you a lot, or you you keep getting jump, jumped by scouts but the person you're healing isn't great at killing them. A syringe gun would be a much better option than a crusader's crossbow. At the moment I use crusader's crossbow because my team are pretty good at killing uh, things that come at me. Uh, but a syringe gun would be better if you prefer to fight things yourselves or your team isn't best at healing people, so that's the benefit. Very sort of medi mediocre weapon I'll say. If you're getting attacked a lot use this rather than this. Alternatively you have a blue saber which is still a syringe gun but instead you have if you hit someone it gives you free health plus it does a I believe it gives you a touch more damage. It use oh, I don't want to say this but we're not going to say it. It might give you more damage but let's say it's the same but instead of just a stock syringe gun if someone's really good at like keep coming into you and your people aren't people your team aren't good at killing it use the blue salga it does it gives you health on hit as well so say someone just done a 65 meat shot to you a scout done a 65 meat shot uh, every time you hit him with one needle per needle will give you plus three health so if you hit him with 20 needles you know three to that's 60 have you got your health back and it does fire pretty quick so it's good it also says minus health two health drain per second on wearer and you're thinking you're losing health for having this weapon what's why are you doing this uh, a medic has a stock healing rate of 3 health per second. It will always have that healing rate. If you're out of combat for a long time, it, that goes up to 4, 5, and then 6, finally. No, 5. It'll go up to 5. So, you know, it, it doesn't. you don't lose health, you just lose the health you gain per second. So, usually you're gaining 3 health per second, you're constantly gaining 3 health per second, you're only gaining 1 now. So, if you're out of combat, you've just been injured, you're only going to be healing 1 health per second instead of free health a second which can be quite detrimental you know you're much more much more of a liability and you're going to die a lot quicker but you know if you are always he whoever you're healing is always dying and you need something to do well not something to do you need while you're backing out firing you can get health while backing out and firing and you can put out a lot of damage you know, cause for example if someone does 60 damage to you and then you get 30 health back and they do 60 damage again you know instead of losing 120 health you've only lost 90 health 
because because of the healing factor. So it's a very good weapon, but I'd recommend this for pubs rather than Highlander. Or if, as I say, if your person you're healing keeps dying, use this or this. Overdose, very similar to these two. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but you do 10% less damage, but your movement speed increases based on the uber charge you have to a maximum of 10%. So if you have 10% uber charge, you will move 10% faster. Simple as that. You just move faster and now it only does 10% less damage. So uh, above this one, I would use this one because you're still putting out damage and you're moving faster, if that makes sense. So while using this as well, you should be able to hold them long, off long enough so whoever you're healing, whoever's around you can kill what you're attacking. So you shouldn't need this too much. Oh, whoops. Don't want to do that. But you don't want. Oh, you. Ugh. You, uh, you know, out of these three weapons, there's much of a toss-up. Spunk everywhere, of course, if it is a toss-up. But still, <laughs> you know, whichever one you want to use, it's very much personalised. So anyway, hopefully that gives you a base understanding of primary and secondary weapons. Let's go to the melee weapons. Now, the medic's melee weapons. Oh, I'm useless at this. <laughs> but stop one, the bone saw. It does 65 damage, same as every other melee weapon in the game, apart from the Stock Stock melee damage. Very good weapon, very average weapon. When I say good weapon, I mean literally average, no downside, no upside. It will just do the, do its job. Literally a melee weapon. Amputator. Now, if you have the amputator active while you are holding it, you will gain plus three health a second. So you could be healing anywhere from six health a second to nine health a second. So if you're always low on health or you have no one around you healing, a very very good weapon. As you notice, it does less damage. So if anyone jumps you while you are trying to heal, you aren't going to be able to damage them as quickly, which is where your primary weapon comes in, or your teammate comes in, preferably a teammate. But if you taunt with this weapon, everyone around you will be healed. So if everyone around you needs to be healed quickly and you haven't got a quick fix, this could be a pretty viable weapon. You know, you could pull out the amputator and heal everyone at once. That's if you're desperate to hold a position and you don't really have time to start ubercharging people. I personally recommend uber charging people before, or healing people with a, with a me medigun before, use an amputator, but if the situation calls for it, a very interesting viable weapon. But out of hell, reskin of the bone saw, frying pan, <laughs> every class has it, it is so annoying, reskin of that out of hell and the bone saw. Solemn vow, reskin of the bone saw, but it allows you to see enemies health, so you can call out for your team how much health the enemy has. Uh, very good weapon. I tried to use this, if you remember last season, didn't work out, I was so busy shouting other stuff, didn't really work, but I could start using it again, I don't have to shout as much now. But, you know, very viable weapon, very good weapon. If you're going to use the bone saw, you might as well use the solemn vow. It's basically just a complete upgrade to the bone saw. It, it does the same damage, it's the same exact thing, except you can see enemy health, so if you're using this over this, I'd seriously be questioning it. You know. This is just a complete upgrade. There's no second thoughts about it. It is literally an upgrade. Anyway, Ubersaw. Uh, very good weapon. It it when it's a slower firing speed, it makes it you swing f slower. You won't when you're in combat. You won't really notice the slower swing speed. So, which is why I recommend using this over this or this. I mean, obviously it's personal preference, but it does give you 25% Uber charge on hit which is very good. If your pyro can pin a scout in the corner or a scout runs by you with bonk, and this does work, and you hit him with an ubersaw, you get 25% free uber charge. So instead of building your uber charge in 40 seconds max, or 50 seconds max, you'll get in 30 seconds, 35 seconds. You can beat the other team to an uber by using this, which is why I prefer it over this, the regular bone saw. So I recommend using the uber saw over the normal bone saw, but it is completely personal preference. As I say, everything you do is personal preference and what your team does. I use the Ubersaw just because I know I don't use melee very often, and then when I do use it, I'm pretty certain I'm going to get my 25% Uber charge, otherwise there's no point pulling that out. That's what she said. <laughs> but anyway, back to the Ubersaw. You know, I'd say this is a complete upgrade to this. Vitasaur. Now the Vitasaur, on death you will retain up to 20% of your uber charge. So if you die with 21% uber charge, you will retain 20%. I know it's quite confusing, but it I took me a while to work this out, but instead of 
sort of if you lose 100% you'll keep 20% if you lose 80% you'll keep 20% if you lose 15% you'll keep 15% it's up to your up to 20% of what you have is kept although what you have let's go to this from a different angle say you build your uber charge anything up to 20% is what you'll keep that's the best way I can put it <laughs> hopefully that makes sense so if you're building your uber charge anything you have up to 20% and over you will keep up to that 20% so if you die with 40% you'll keep 20% if you die with 21% you'll keep 20% if you die with 90% you have 19% hopefully that makes sense but you lose 10 max health so instead of having 150 health you'll have 140 health so I'd say this is personally the best medic melee weapon because you can keep uber charge and the game revolves around the uber charges a good uber charge will win you a game a bad uber charge will lose you a game you know it's it, the more uber charges you have the better chance you have of achieving what you want the reason I'm and that that 10 percent that minus 10 health sorry it won't make much difference if as a medic if you go below 10 health in game it's a one in 20 chance you're going to survive so having that 20 percent uber charge stored every time you die is a much much better option than that minus 10 health in my opinion why don't I use it? I don't use it because it's banned in UGC. It's annoying. I don't know why it's banned. If anyone can explain to me in the comments why it's banned, it, you know, maybe it is for the fact that the Uber Charge will turn the tide of the game. Maybe that is why they banned it, but that is why I don't use it. It's no point practicing with something if I'm not ever going to use it. I mean, I'd use it in pubs. If I always play pubs, I would use it, but unfortunately, I don't. I play a lot of scrims and things, so better practice with what you're using in game. Uber Sword anyway that is all the medic main medic weapons they're all the personalized ones i mean all the reskins i don't have them but they're all the same as the bone saw anyway but anyway guys hopefully you've enjoyed this hopefully it hasn't been too long and you haven't got completely upset with me and bored of my voice by now but hopefully this video has been useful i mean i've been looking for something like this and haven't found anything so hopefully all you young prospecting medics can learn off this and hopefully add in the comments if you do have a different opinion or found a different use for the weapon than what I've explained please put in the comments because I'd love to know and I'm sure everyone else would as well so thanks for watching guys I hope you have a lovely weekend and take care